The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus said to his disciples, There is no sound tree that produces rotten fruit, nor again a rotten tree that produces sound fruit. For every tree can be told by its own fruit. People do not pick, pick figs from thorns, nor gather grapes from brambles. A good man draws what is good from the store of goodness in his heart. A bad man draws what is bad from the store of badness. For a person's words flow out of what fills their heart. Why do you call me Lord, Lord, and not do what I say? Everyone who comes to me and listens to my words and acts on them, I will show you what he is like. He is like the man who, when he built his house, dug and dug deep and laid the foundations on rock. When the river was in flood, it bore down on that house, but could not shake it. It was so well built. But the one who listens and does nothing is like the man who built his house on soil, with no foundations. As soon as the river bore down on it, it collapsed, and what a ruin that house became. This is the Gospel of the Lord. So once again, you're warmly welcome to this church today for this day with Mary. And our first reading from St. Paul's letter to the Corinthians has a particular relevance for those who attend the day with Mary. You come from many different countries and from different places. However, you are united, as St. Paul recommends, by your sharing in this Eucharistic feast. You are united also in your love for Mary. And when you sit down together today to share tea and coffee, sandwiches, and the stories from your lives, you will be joined together uh, again. When we come to take part in this day for Mary, we understand that although we are individuals, we are also part of the one body of Christ. We come to give thanks for our membership of the body of Christ. We come to ask God, through the intercession of Mary, to answer our many petitions. And we come to experience the friendship that St. Paul speaks of in the first reading. In the Gospel reading today, Jesus tells us that we should build our home in him. To build our home in Christ involves listening to his words and acting on them. And we all know what the words of Christ are. We hear them in the Gospels every Sunday. We are to love God and our neighbor. And I'm sure that this takes place in all of your lives. You have tried to be nurturing and encouraging people. You've tried to be forgiving and merciful. You've tried to be honest and just. And we know that it's not always easy to do this, but we know that God calls us as we are. We're not perfect. We're told in the scriptures that the Lord came to call sinners, and we know we sin, but we also know we have a deep desire to be close to God and our neighbor, and we try to put that into action, as the Lord tells us, by following his words. In a sense, it's easier to love God, especially in his Son and in his Blessed Mother and in the saints. The life of Jesus, Mary and the saints make it easy to love them. Their lives were so characterized by service and by love. There is a charismatic hymn, I'm sure you know, What a Friend We Have in Jesus. Do you know that one? What a Friend We Have in Jesus. And it's true, uh, we do have a friend in Jesus and when we think about him and reflect on his life and his generosity and his kindness, we find it uh, not so difficult, we find it easy to live 
uh, to love him. Sometimes, however, when we suffer in life or when life is difficult, we even find it hard to love God. We say, why is it necessary to suffer like this? We ask God, why have you made the world so? So it's not always easy even uh, to love God without reservation. However, of course, in our sufferings, we know that we have a God who has compassion for us, who suffers with us, a God, in fact, who sent his son to die on the cross to be with us in our suffering. So the Lord uh, understands uh, the difficulties that life uh, brings us. However, Jesus does ask asks us to uh, make, to build our homes in him, uh, to do what he asks us to do. And so we commit ourselves once again this day to love God and to love our neighbor, despite the difficulties and despite the challenges that that presents. But of course, we don't have to do it on our own. We do it through the power of the Holy Spirit and through the power of our prayers. When we pray, we know that God's Spirit is with us, enabling us to love our neighbor and to love God. I hope uh, you've had a, a good summer. Have you had a day with Mary since, since the summer ended? You have, last week, was there a day with Mary? Yes. There was, so, so you're, uh, you're back in the swing of things. I was fortunate enough to have a nice holiday myself this summer. I went cycling on the west coast of Ireland and I cycled down the coast for about 50 miles and then about 200 miles around uh, the lovely county of Kerry between the mountains and the sea. And as I was cycling along, I was very aware of God's providence. The fields were full of birds of different uh, types and they were also very full of swallows. And the swallows were fat and they were ready to make that long journey back to Africa from this little wet island on the west coast of Europe. And for those many thousands of miles, the Lord had provided them with all they need, all of the grains they needed over the summer. And you could see them still catching uh, flies and still eating, getting ready for that long journey home. And each farmhouse I passed, there was a little slatted shed where the cattle would go in the winter. And beside the shed, there were plastic containers, big bales full of grass, which we call silage. And that silage will feed those cattle when the rain falls and when the wind blows. And I was aware as I was cycling through the, mount, through the uh, countryside, I was aware of the providence of God. God had cared for these um, birds and God had cared for the animals for the winter that would come. And God, I'm sure, also had cared for the people in that area, just as God cares for us uh, on our journey through life. And each time I passed a little church, I would pop in to say a prayer. My youngest sister decided not to come cycling with me this year. I said to her, Miriam, come cycling again on the west coast of Ireland. I'll bring you, bring you into all the churches and show you all the statues. Strangely enough, she decided not to come with me uh, this year. But anyway, uh, when I went into the churches, you would say a prayer before the Blessed Sacrament and think of the community there, the community of Christians in that area, and you'd pray for them and for your family. But as I was cycling along the road too, regularly there would be a statue of Our Lady outside the villages or set into a niche in a house wall. Or once when I got to the highest pass in the mountains pretty exhausted, there was Our Lady standing above all of God's creation. And so I was very conscious that Our Lady was uh, guiding me on my journey through the west coast of Ireland. And, I, and that's the way, uh, that's the reality for all of us. The Lord is there uh, in the Eucharist for us in a particular way. Our Lady is there in our lives, in all of the steps of our lives. And God provides for us as God provides uh, for uh, the animals, uh, for the birds, and for uh, all men and women. So today we come with, uh, with a sense of gratitude 
uh, for God's provision uh, in our lives. We also come wanting to respond uh, to what the Lord said in the Gospel. He said, if you, uh, if you uh, want to build your house on firm foundations, you will do what I say. And so today we ask the Holy Spirit, uh, through our prayers, to give us the strength and the wisdom to always do what the Lord wants us to do in our lives, so that we too will be brought home uh, to God uh, when our time is, is finished.